everyone, it's Sarah Fleming from Prepare to Die Paper Crafts. And today we're going to make this super sparkly card. See how it sparkles? Ooh. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're making today. And I'm pretty excited about it. I had a lot of fun coming up with it. Um, we're going to be heat embossing the sentiment with glitter. So if you've never done that before, this will be a fun new technique for you to try. Uh, before we get started, let's see, what do I want to talk about? The Designer Series paper sale is almost over. It ends on Tuesday is the last day. Not today. A week from today is the last day. That'll be your last day for the um, Designer Series paper sale where you're getting select Designer Series paper, buy three, get one free. So um, make sure you get in on that if you want to get in on that and haven't already. Or even if you have already, there's no limit. You can buy six and get two free. You can buy 12 and get um, one, two, three, four, four free. <laughs> I should have done the math before I said that. Um, okay, so I'll show you a few things I've been um, making this week. I did this one. This is for a blog hop later this week for the Ink and Inspiration blog hop. Here, I used the new Stampin' Blend markers. These are the Knight of Navy markers, and I made a little faded jean pocket and had all these little pumpkins and, you know, fallish type bits coming out. I colored the, um, the little, what are these? These are called White Perfect Accents. I just got these for the first time, and... I colored them with the Knight of Navy dark and light markers, and I loved how they turned out, so that's cool. And then the sentiment and these little things come from the Mary Cafe. Oh, I can show you. This one, the stamp set. That's got like three different occasions involved. It's You can use it for Valentine's Day, Christmas, um, fall. So there was something else. Um, I know I'm missing something, but, oh, New Year, there's Happy New Year. So, um, so, anyway, yeah, that's this card. I had a lot of fun with that one. And then, and that uses the wood textures paper, which is in the designer series paper sale. And then, let's see, I made this one to promote my new Stampin' Blends Marker Club. If you haven't uh, seen my video on that, check it out. I'll put a link to the video and the sign-up form. You have to sign up before or no later than November 10th, and your kits will ship somewhere uh, for the first month. will ship somewhere around like November 20th. Uh, there are two weekends in between there, though, so it might be a day or two after November 20th. So um, I made her. This is from Christmas in the Making, one of my very favorite stamp sets this year. Um, she's wearing Old Olive and Cherry Cobbler using the Stampin' Blends markers. Um, so check out that club if you would like to uh, participate in that. It runs for five months and it runs through Celebration and you will get your Celebration items. You will get one item each month for participating in the club. Um, this is another one I made, just playing around with the markers, and I just got Garden Girl in last night, so I made this quickly last night. I stamped the flowers, and then colored them in, and then I colored the sky. I did this all with the pool party, the light pool party marker, and I was just amazed at how close you can get to the flowers, and you can color right over the black lines of the flowers, and, and just, um, you know, you don't have, like... You don't have open spaces to worry about, so you get a really nice little um, background using the markers. Hopefully I didn't run all of the alcohol out of that marker <laughs> because I colored this background for a long time. And then there's the Bermuda Bay markers, and I've used almost all of the markers um, on her, so I still need to work on hair, but that's one of the things I'm learning. So um, yeah, she's adorable. That's Garden Girl. And now I think we're going to get to making this card. Um, is that everything? Yep. We're going to get to making this card now. So I'm using the Add a Little Glitz stamp set, um, which is one of the ones that I got just for the sentiments. I love this a gift for you, but I love this big, bold, may your season sparkle. And that's the stamp we're going to use today. We're also going to use this little star as part of our background. So we'll get started on that. Isn't this a fun card? 
Um, now I think I have, I must have my camera on autofocus because every time I put something close, it, you know, does that weird like jolting autofocus. So I'll have to look into my settings and see what, what I'm doing there. All right, move all this stuff. And we're going to start with the Misty. If you don't have one of these, it's a stamp positioning tool. I don't know if you can see the bottom of the Misty where I'm stamping. Can you see my fingers right here? Okay, so you can see that. Okay, um, so it's a stamp positioning tool that um, lets you stamp exactly where you want to. It's To me, when I'm stamping with red rubber stamps, and the Add a, add a Little Glitz is red rubber, so it comes in clear mount and I think wood mount. I just noticed that not all of the red rubber come in wood mount anymore. Um, but they all do come in the clear mount or cling mount as you probably are used to hearing them. So um, when I'm using red rubber, I like to stamp with the Misty because then I can stamp exactly where I want to. Um, otherwise, it's hard to know exactly where the red where the lines are stamping. So I am. Um, so the, I like to get out my Misty when I use the red rubber, or if I'm stamping a sentiment that I'm gonna um, that I know I might have trouble getting a good image on. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do, since we're gonna emboss and glitter the sentiment, um, you can do it two ways. You can either stamp it in real red. If you have a Misty, you can do it two ways. You can stamp it in real red, and then stamp it again using Versamark or you can ink it up in Versamark and then ink it up with real red because the Versamark is not going to hurt your real red ink pad so you can ink it up in both you just have to do the Versamark first and then stamp it and either way it's going to work for you but the Versamark inking it up with Versamark and then real red is what we're going to do today because you can do that whether you have a misty or not so, um, I mean, I guess you could do it without a Misty, but it's probably not going to come out that great. All right, so that's exactly where I want to stamp it. This is four and a quarter inches wide by two inches tall. And where is my, first let's run the embossing buddy over it since we are embossing. We're going to heat emboss this. And we're going to first, oh wait, let me make sure that my stamp is clean because... I may have already, I may have had real red on it last. Oh yeah, look at that. That would have been fun. I would have had to like wash my whole Versamark pad out and re-ink it. Did you know you can do that? Because you can, if you mess up an ink pad, you can, what I usually do is just get a baby wipe or a paper towel and wipe it out. An alcohol-free baby wipe. Um, wipe it out. Or you can actually like clean all the ink out of your pads and re-ink them. That's going to take a lot of ink. So we try to avoid that. In fact, I'm, I need to re-ink my Versamark. So I'm going to start with Versamark. And I'm going to... My Big Shot handle is in the way. There. <laughs> Here. So this way you can see me inking it up. So I'm going to ink it up really liberally with the Versamark. And trying not to move the stamp while I'm doing it. So I don't put the stickers on the back of my red rubber just because when I'm using the Misty, it sticks so much better. And it also sticks better to the clear blocks. You can put a little bit of on this on the sticker. If you do put the stickers on your cling mount stamps or your clear mount stamps, you can ink, put a little bit of the Tombow on the black, thin it out on the back of the sticker, thin it out, and then um, Wait for it to dry and then mount it on your block and then it'll stick and you'll have this kind of reusable, sticky, tacky backing. But I don't like to do that on the Misty because the Misty is hard enough to clean and I don't need to make life any harder for myself. So I've started leaving the sticker off of most of my red rubber. Okay, so I make sure my paper is all the way in the corner and then I'm going to stamp down. We'll see how it went. Okay, I don't like the real red coverage on that, so I'm going to do it again. Uh, but I'm just going to ink it up in real red this time. Because we do have Versamark on there. And the point of the Versamark is to keep it wet enough until we have a chance to emboss it. So now I'm going to put down a piece of scrap paper under where I'm going to emboss. 
And what I've done is I've taken the clear embossing powder and the dazzling diamonds emboss or dazzling diamonds glitter. You could also, I think we still have the gold and silver glitter. You could use one of those too, but I wanted it to just be sparkly without kind of overpowering the sentiment. So um, what I've done is I've poured a little bit of each of them into here. And when I'm done, I'm going to pour it all back in here because I was almost done with this one and I already have a new clear embossing powder. So I just poured it in and then just mixed it up a little bit with my bone folder. And then I poured it out onto the paper and mixed it a little more and then I poured it back in. So I just used like the lid of an embossing thing, uh, 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 an embellishment container. So I'm just going to sprinkle this on and then tap it off and yeah it looks like I've got some pretty good coverage I'm gonna do it again I might have talked for too long and let it dry a little too much because when you're stamping with when you ink with Versamark first and then ink with a color you don't have quite as long because the other color kinda dries faster so but we are sparkly and now we're gonna heat emboss that I do recommend if you have a misty, the better way, I think, here I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the jar. I think the better way to do it if you do have the misty is to go ahead and stamp it in real red first and then stamp it in Versamark in the same exact spot because you can do that with the misty. Um, then stamp it in Versamark and then after you've stamped it in Versamark, you'll have a lot more time to work with it because you don't have quite as much time to work with it when you do, when you ink both together and then stamp. All right, so I'm gonna blow dry this a little bit or heat it up, whatever, whatever it is you do with the heat tool. Here, I've got some stray embossing powder. Oh, now that's stray glitter. Okay, so it should be good. So I'll tell y'all, I had to scrap my Pick a Pumpkin class. I was going to do an online class, the Pick a Pumpkin bundle, that's the Pick a Pumpkin stamps and the Pattern Pumpkin dies. I had to scrap it because um, we kind of got hit the last couple of weeks and I did not have time to get that finished in time for y'all to be able to make all of the things in time for Thanksgiving. Um, we had a bit of, okay, so see how this is sparkly? So now you've got glitter on your sentiment, but it's not covering everything. It's just on your sentiment. So that's how you do that. And now we're going to make the rest of our card. Let me, okay, my Versamark is not closed. Okay. I'll put this over here, move this. Okay, so I had to scrap that class because, well, first we got hit with lice. And it was me and the baby. And <laughs> um, my hair is very thick. So it took a full week and five treatments and so many, um, so many uses of the electronic lice comb to get rid of it in my hair. It was pretty much a nightmare. Then, as soon as I was, do I have anyone still on here? I hope y'all aren't totally grossed out by me. As soon as I, okay, I'm going to stamp this star in the background, but I just want to kind of come down part of it. I don't want, I don't want this top right corner covered. So then I, oh, I'm sorry, my, I forgot to turn off my notifications. So then um, as I was getting over the lice and thinking, okay, we're about done with the lice. This is great. Well, then I had developed a rash on the back of my neck, and I thought, well, maybe it was from the lice treatments. But then I started having some other symptoms, and um, my mother-in-law looked at the rash, and she said it looks like shingles. So, and then my knitting group told me, go to emergency care, or go to urgent care, because you need to get on the antivirals as soon as you can. And thankfully, I listened to them, and I did. So, sure enough, I went to urgent care, and I have shingles. So that's been fun, um, and oh, I, I don't think I should have stamped this one here, but it's still going to be great. So um, that was unpleasant. Now I'm going to put this on dimensionals. Don't y'all love it when you get to start a brand new sheet of dimensionals? It's like, I don't know, it just feels, I don't know, it's like opening a brand new package of Skittles that you're about to eat all of them, except I try not to do that anymore.
though I did that the other night. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, they caught it early. They put me on antivirals, and so it's so far it's pretty mild, but I'm itching from like my scalp to my all the way down my back, which and plus I have like some weird like tingling and I don't know, just like nerve weirdness. But um, the thing that's crazy is that since my scalp is itching from the shingles, I keep having to go in and comb through my hair again with the lice comb just to make sure that it's not lice coming back or something. Ugh. So I'm like, could I have just gotten the shingles in a different location? Though, I mean, I guess this is an okay location. It's not the worst. It could be worse. Like, but could I have gotten it in a different location or had a little more time so I'm not sitting there still having to comb my hair every day and make sure that <laughs> I don't have a recurrence of the life. But whatever. Um, I'm sure it'll, this too shall pass. Um, okay, and oh good, I still have people on here. Thank you for staying and not leaving and unfollowing and unsubscribing because of all of my life talk. Um, but yeah, so had to make some adjustments. I had to scrap a class and that's the class I chose to scrap. I am going to start up live classes again though and I'm excited because I'm going to start doing those in November. Uh, so stamp camp will be back and I'm going to start some out of the house classes too. So I'm excited. All right. So, ah, oh, you know what I did? I put these on before I stuck my little pine things down in there. So, hmm. I might have to pry. Nope. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll manage. All right. So I'm using the mm, pine cones, something pine cones. I always forget the name of that, this die set, and I never remember to look it up. But it's the one that coordinates with the Christmas pine stamp set. So I'm going to put this out of the way and bring in the big shot because we have a few things to cut. I want to cut one of each size of the um, little pine branches. Okay, and before I do that, I am going to, no, I'm not gonna do it on those, but I am gonna do it on the pine cones. I'm gonna use the, the adhesive sheets because that makes it so much easier. All right, where my dies go? They're right here. So, I have a little impromptu trip out of town tomorrow. I might get to see Vivian. That's very exciting. And um, but I have like a little day trip. Okay, so I've got all three sizes of the pine branches on there. And I've been trying different ways for getting these to cut without using the precision base plate just because I don't like to have to take out my magnetic platform and you really should never use the precision base plate with the magnetic platform. So I'm using the, I'm using it concave toward the pine, and that seems to be working better. So, oh, sorry about the shaking. I know the shaking's not as bad as when I had the other stand, but I don't like it to shake at all. I can't mount my camera on the, or my phone mount on the ceiling because the ceiling fan is right above me. Oh, in fact, I should turn it on because I'm a little hot. Oh. Okay, so there's that one. There's this one. And the big one. Okay, so we'll do those. And then, let's see, we need two, uh, no, yeah, two of the white just backing pine cones and one of them it doesn't matter if it's got because you're just going to glue something on top of it and you can't see it so I'm going to not worry about putting it over that inked spot there I love being able to use up my whisper white scraps because I have like three gallon sizes of block bags of whisper white scraps so let's see does this fit yep that one will fit we will run that one through and then we need two, oh wait, and then we need one of the, I should have run this through at the same time. 
should have been a little more efficient. We're going to run through the... Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I have another one in there. Got another sneeze. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. Run this one through. This one will have to run back and forth a couple of times. That one looks good. Looks like it's all the way through. I'll have to poke out the pokey things in a minute. And then I need one little one, right? Oh, no, I need my glimmer paper. So this is the Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper. And I'm gonna cut out a little, uh, I missed that stamp set. That was the Santa Claus and the Nutcracker stamp set. That's a great stamp set. I also love being able to use up my glimmer paper scraps. Because, man, two sheet. I mean, I know our glimmer paper seems a little expensive, but number one, it's very high quality. I've never found any other glimmer paper that I thought was as good a quality as ours. Um, and the other thing I like about our glimmer paper is it really lasts forever. Because you, you know, you don't use it on that many things and even when you do you use such a small amount okay this guy nope that's not the right one this one is pretty cool no nope. this, <laughs> this one's cool because it's gonna cut these little kind of triangle part triangles in the in the paper but it doesn't cut the top so it just pokes out and sticks out and I'll show you how that looks so now I'm gonna that one out of that corner. I think I've had this same piece scrap of glimmer paper for maybe three years. Love our glimmer paper though. And I don't know if you know this, but the Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper, you can actually, you can get like one of our Stampin' Spritzers. I have one that's got alcohol in it and one that has water in it. And they come, you get two for like three bucks. You get the spritzers and then you can put a couple of drops of whatever ink color you want in and spritz it on the Dazzling Diamonds paper and make your Dazzling Diamonds paper any color you want it. So there's a little pro tip for you. All right, so I've got my little paper piercer and I'm gonna poke out all these little, first I'm just gonna run my thumb along the back. Oh, I totally forgot to use the adhesive sheets again. I keep forgetting that we have those back. So I'm just poking through so that all of these little pine cone bits, or these little pine cone, whatever they're called, the little leaves. I don't know if they're called leaves on a pine cone, but we'll call them that. The little leaves will pop out. And then they look very pine cone-y. And I'll show you a close up what that looks like. Okay. Some of these don't want to pop. Sorry, I know watching me poke things with the Stampin' Piercer, or pierce, Paper Piercer, what do we call that? Paper Piercer. Um, watching me poke things is probably not the most fun. But you see how this, how that looks? So they're out, but they're not cut out. So they're not holes. I really love that. Okay. <laughs> I just tossed, like, Cup. I guess I'd put some of the things I cut on my little die sheet. Okay. Put these back on. All right. So let's look. Let's see what we got. And if y'all are commenting, I don't see your comments. So um, I bet I'll come. I'll come back and respond to any comments later. I don't know, sometimes Facebook shows me my comments during the live videos, and sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of weird. All right. And it, there's no rhyme or reason. Like, sometimes it's when I'm selfie mode, and sometimes it's when the camera's not facing me. So, I, I don't know. Okay, so we're going to glue one of these. No, we'll use the other one for that. Okay, so this one's going to go here. We have this going here. Uh, okay. And see, I'm such a dimensionals user. Oh, there we go. 
and stick it between dimensionals. Well, that's going to work then. So no harm done. This one will go between dimensionals. And this one will. Okay. Well, let's glue those down before we move on. See, I wasn't even going to use the Tombow today, but then I forgot to use the adhesive sheets. I'm just putting the glue on kind of, I don't know, the bottom few because I want them to pop up. That glue will dry clear, but I am going to get up as much as I can so we don't have sticky parts on the card. Um, baby wipe. Okay, so do y'all do Halloween? Do you have plans for Halloween? We, my, we were going to do the whole family. We were going to be Moana characters. My son was obsessed with Maui for a while, so he was going to be Maui. And then Buttercup was going to be Moana. The baby's going to be Hey Hey the Chicken. I was going to be Tafiti, and my husband was going to be Tamatoa the Glittery Crab. But <laughs> with all of the issues we've had around here, all of the things making me itchy, we have, I don't, I got this wet somehow, I guess with my baby, right? but it's going to be hidden. Um, I had to scrap like doing mine and my husband's because those were going to be the most complicated. So still going to do the kids, but my husband and I aren't going to dress up. So it's just kind of a bummer, but um, it's okay. Okay, my husband's not even obsessed with Maui anymore because he is obsessed with Scrooge McDuck. He, in fact, on their first little first day of school things that I did, he said he wants to be Scrooge McDuck when he grows up. I'm going to glue this to this, and then I've misplaced the other plain white one that I did. I am going to need that. So I'm doing a little scan while I'm gluing. I'm doing a little scan pretending that I'm not. Now I just gave it away. Um, hmm. Need the other little one. Or I might just cut one really quickly so I don't have to waste the time with this one. But I'm just going to cut it down here. And, oh, no, found it. Yay. Okay. So this one, this works better if you have the... If you use the multi-purpose adhesive sheets, you put it on the back of your paper before you cut it, and then you peel it off, and it's a sticker. Um, something like this with a lot of intricate pieces, it works better that way because then you don't get glue seep. Is that a is that a thing? Glue seep. You don't get the seeping glue coming out from under. So, and then. And see, I had a lot of the glue seep on this one, so I, I just poured a bunch of glitter on it so I wouldn't have sticky parts. But this one, I don't know, I guess this has some stickiness. So I'm going to pour, that's embossing powder. I am going to pour a little bit of glitter on there. Square paper. Well, and it'll just catch any glue that's on there, so then it won't be sticky anymore. Oh, I guess there was quite a bit of sticky. Of course, our dazzling diamonds um, sticks very well. Um, it's clingy. I guess you'd like a good glitter to be clingy. Okay, so then we got this one, this one, and this one. And they're all going to be on dimensionals. Oh, y'all, I can't believe it. I'm going to put one dimensional on something. I'm on the top. Because we already put the other thing up on dimensionals. So, okay. So we'll do it like that. And I could put some glue here, but I think this is going to be fine with just the dimensional. popping up and we need a little bow and then we're done so let's 
get our little, this is the, what's this stuff called? I just got it in last night. It's real red, solid ribbon, one eighth inch solid ribbon. It's kind of a, like a, almost a taffeta, but also not. <laughs> it feels like polyester actually, um, but it's pretty. Can't really figure out what it is. But it's, it's, it's like a grow grain, but also not cotton. So, so it's hard to say what it is. But it has that grow grain texture or that grow grain like design. Oh, okay. Let's try again. Okay, so where are my glue dots? I pulled out a thing of glue dots so I wouldn't lose them. I only found a tiny glue dot. Okay. Stick that down right there. And trim. And trim. So that's it. And there's our card. A little sparkly um, card using the oh, using the add a little glitz and some glue on there. Have to get that off. Oh, here I'll do that when the camera's not going, so I don't shake the whole thing. All right. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll put up all the links. Make sure you, if you want to send and receive potentially receive cards from all over the world. Make sure you join the Random Act of Kindness card group. Um, and if you want to learn how to use these wonderful stamp and blends, the alcohol markers, join my marker club, which starts in November. And I have to have signups by no later than November 10th. So thanks for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.